in Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 17. I'm reading from New King James Version. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to encourage you today to hear what I just shared afresh. You know, sometimes we hear things so much, they become commonplace to us. So let's take a fresh ear to this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All of the kingdom of God operates on faith. It is by grace you are saved through faith. And this, not of yourselves, is a gift from God. So in order to receive salvation, you've got to have faith. But God gives each man a measure of faith, each person a measure of faith. So we have the faith we need to trust him. What is faith? Well, you know what faith is. In Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 1, it tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So in order for me to have faith, to hope and trust in what I cannot see, to, to have, if you will, put substance to it, mean it's something real for me. It's not some pie in the sky, hocus pocus thing, but it's a real substantive truth for me that God is hearing me, that God is moving in my behalf. I have faith in what he tells us uh, because it all comes back to faith. We need to know well, then how do we improve and, and how do we increase our faith? Let me read it to you again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When God uh, says, he who comes to me in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So again, the the currency of the kingdom of God, if you will, the way things operate in the kingdom is by faith. So I've got to have faith in order for God to reward me, to, to even hear me. He said, if I come to him and don't have faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So then I go right back. How do I keep continuing to grow in my faith? What did the word of God say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what does that mean? That means I need to constantly be filling my hearing, my ears with the word of God. It's not enough to just know it exists out there sometime or somewhere. It's not enough to say I read it some time ago. It's important to think I must constantly renew my spirit with the word so that I can continually keep my faith built up. If I'm going to be effective in prayer, I've got to have faith. And to have faith, I've got to have the word of God. I liken it to Popeye and spinach. Y'all know the story of Popeye if you're old enough and if you're not, Google it. Popeye was the sailor man cartoon many of us watched every day as little kids, got much joy out of, and he always found himself in a pickle. He was a happy-go-lucky kind of guy, had a cute girlfriend who looked like a spaghetti noodle, but bless her heart. And she always seemed to be the object of the, uh, the um, what's the word I want, the, the transgressions or the, the manipulations or the, the uh, things that the enemy of Popeye would come up with in, a, in some kind of way, he'd figure out how to get the olive oil so he could snatch her or whatever. He wanted to have her for his girl. And of course, the olive oil didn't want him. So uh, Bruto, he was known as, would come up with these schemes to be able to snatch her. And of course, Papa, he tied Papa up, or put some anchor on him so he'd fall. He'd come up with all kinds of stuff. But how did Papa get out of it? Y'all remember? Somehow or another, he could be tied in a knot, but somehow or another, he would get that can of spinach out, slurping that spinach, and boom, his muscles would grow. I want you to see the word of God as your spinach. I want you to see how he didn't rely on yesterday's spinach. He didn't go by last week's spinach. He didn't go by Sunday's spinach. He didn't go by Bible study night spinach. Each and every situation required him to have a fresh dose. 
how many know that that's just a, a carnal example of a truth that God has given us in his word. If we're going to be powerful in prayer, we need faith. And if we're going to have faith, we need the word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I want you to make sure that you are taking your daily bread. What did Jesus say in the Lord's prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. What did God send them from heaven? A daily dose of manna. He didn't let them store up any overnight. The only exception was from the Sabbath where they could take enough to last through the Sabbath so they wouldn't have to get up on the Sabbath. But other than that, they had to receive that manna daily. That's a principle that God has driven home to let us know we need a daily dose. How many know when Daniel, powerful man of God, walked the earth, he didn't just limit his time of prayer and consecration with God to once a day. He got in God's face three times a day. So there's no limitations on how much time you can spend in this world other than the practical uh, challenges that you have to live your life. The point I'm making is <clears throat> when you feel worn or weary, when you feel weak in your faith, when you feel like you don't have what it takes the muster to go on, I want you to check your daily dose. I want you to check your meter. How much word have you put in the pipeline to be able to walk by faith and not by sight? How much have you fed your spirit to be able to be built up in your most holy faith and to have the fervency to keep praying even when things aren't going well? even when things are challenging, even when things are difficult. How do we keep going? We keep going because we keep feeding our spirit the very word of God. What does God's word say about it? He said it's quick, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. God's word is eternal and it is our strength. So I'm challenging you, make sure you're getting your daily dose. Make sure you're not waiting until you're completely empty to then try to go and resuscitate your soul. Get in God's face each day. Fill your spirit up. Have some overflow. Have some surplus. Because guess what? The world is constantly draining us. And, and as we pray, we pour out. As we pray for others, we pour out. So we got to constantly replenish ourselves so that we can pray with the fervency and the effectualness that we want to see in our time of prayer, that we want God's hand to be moved. We want him to sense us. We want him to know that we have faith because we don't want to be him, hear him say it. You can't please me because you don't have any faith. You're not trusting me. When the man of God came to, uh, a man came to uh, Jesus, I recall, and he said, Lord, if you're able, heal my son. And he said, if I'm able. And he said, you know, in essence, we mean if. But what did Jesus, what did the man recognize? He said, it's not you, God. I know you're able. He said, help my unbelief. And that's help my lack of faith. How do I help my lack of faith? I have to do what the word says. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can meditate on it. I can listen to it uh, on the now you can just about get it anywhere, television, YouTube, you name it. There is a place that you can get the word of God. You can listen to it on CDs and DVDs and all kinds of sources that God has made available to us in this generation. Like no other, we have no excuse. We got all kinds of options. Even on television, we got multiple options. So keep building yourself up, building your faith up. I stand in the word of God. I can't overemphasize that we all need to constantly be filling ourselves with the word because otherwise what's happening is you're relying on somebody else's faith. And how many know just like the casket rule, you know, one person to a casket, what we have on our own we have on our own. God bless the child who's got his own. You got to have it for yourself, baby. Ain't no grandmas, ain't no uncles that can hand it down to you. You got to have this faith for yourself. So I pray that you are seeking the face of God, that you are listening, meditating upon, and hearing his word so that you can keep your faith built up. Because in a time like this, we need it. And I'm finding that. In my spirit, I sense 
that we're not always doing what we got to do to keep ourselves filled. So be encouraged today. Yes, that's right. Just like Papa ate his spinach, eat the word, meditate on the word, listen to the word, and watch and see once you have enough faith to move a mountain. Because guess what? Last thing I'm going to share is God is still the same today, yesterday, and forever. So if there's something changing in the equation when I pray, it's got to be me. Because he told me what I can do. He told me I can move mountains. He told me I can lay hands on the sick. He told me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if those things aren't happening, I got to go back and look at the equation. What got messed up in the equation? I got your word. It doesn't change. I got you and the Holy Ghost operating. He doesn't change. So where is the factor that's messing up the equation? Got to be me. Got to be me not staying built up in my faith, not staying in a place where I'm trusting and believing you. So let's do what we got to do, saints of the Most High. Stay in the word in the name of Jesus. Now, let's open the prayer line and let's pray, even now. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Father. Lord God, we trust and thank you for your word, Father. Help us, God, even now to read and meditate on your word. Help us not to get complacent. Help us not to be lax and slack in meditating on and focusing on and listening to your word of God. Help us to stay built up in our faith. Help us, Lord God, to keep seeking your face while you may be found as we come by faith, oh God. I speak that over our lives, Father. I ask you to breathe on us and renew us and revive us again, oh God, where we have grown weary, where we have grown worn, even where we have grown discouraged. This like that man who came to you, Lord Jesus, we say help our unbelief. Help us, oh God, that we can pray by faith and know and trust and believe standing on your word that you will do what you said you would do god we crowd to you now in the mighty and matchless name of jesus we cry for the sick and shut in today we cry for the doctors and nurses today we cry for the emts and the first responders of every sort we cry for those who are on the front line working in various capacities those who are guarding the capital the people who have come from near and far to serve god we ask you to cover them and protect them. We cry out for God, every person who's struggling right now, who's sick in their body, whatever they're facing, O King, we're asking you to divinely intervene. We ask you to help them, God. Surround them with songs of deliverance. Surround them with your word. Give them a hunger and a thirst. Even now, God, that they will be filled with your word. Even now, Father, make a way that they can hear your word even when they're on their sick bed through the radio, through the television, whatever means, Lord God, that they can get built up in their faith and trust you and believe you that you will answer their cry. God, even in us, help us to remember how vital the word of God is to us, that we will continually remember, just like we saw that cartoon. He didn't wait once a week to come and get a can of spinach he knew in immediate situations he needed that spinach for strength help us to see your word even the more as critical and vital to our spiritual strength help us oh god i pray in the name of jesus not to grow lax in meditating on your truth god i crowd i ask you to forgive us god where we have fallen short forgive us where we have not honored you forgive us where we have not esteemed your word as much as we are help us oh god to do what is pleasing in your sight build us up oh god as we come to you daily as we cry to you daily as we meditate on your word daily build us up lord let that word be true that Faith will come by us hearing your word, oh God. God, we cry out now that you would help us even as we transfer, transfer through the highways and byways of the internet and through the atmosphere, God, as we trans send the space that's between us may we connect in the spirit and be on one accord that you would hear our cries like a great crescendo reaching up to heaven O king like a 
incense in your nostrils. May it be pleasing in your sight. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Purge us with hyssop that we would be clean, oh God, in the spirit, even in our conscience, even where we have fallen short. Let us not, Lord God, follow the a spirit of condemnation of any sort, but let us seek your face, oh God, with boldness while we may be found, and help us to forgive one another. God, I know your word says we are to be compassionate to one another, to forgive one another, even as in Christ you have forgiven us. Help us, oh God, to be forgiven, and help us, Lord, where we have been hard-hearted, but we have let strongholds build up in our heart, but we are holding grudges against others. Oh God, let our hearts be pricked that we would have gentle and sensitive hearts and not be okay with having hardness toward anybody. Lord God, you said we ought, we ought to owe nothing but love to one another. Help us, God, not to carry anything that would hinder us from walking in love. God, even now, arrest us in the spirit. Wherever we have been unforgiven, wherever we have been holding grudges, wherever we have been disparaging of one another, arrest us in the spirit, Holy Ghost. Drive out everything that would hinder your faith from fully operating in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I cry for those who are sick today. That there's people they need to forgive, give them a heart to forgive God, that they would not give place to the enemy in their souls to hinder their healthiness and their healing. I pray in the name of Jesus, God. I renounce every form of hatred, every form of backbiting, every form of unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus, forgive me, God, where I've been out of alignment in any wise. And have me, Holy Ghost, help me to walk in love. Likewise, I speak that over every person under the sound of my voice. Let us not let the enemy cut in on us, God, and have us to walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody needs that word to be encouraged. Encourage them, Holy Ghost, to walk by faith and not by sight. Strengthen them, God, that regardless of what they see, that they would trust you. Regardless of what they go through, they would trust you. No, whatever they are experiencing, oh God, they would trust you. Help us all, God, to trust you even the more. Help us, Holy One, to walk in this evil and challenging season of being surrounded by a virus that we cannot see. Help us, oh God, to trust you even the more. I plead the blood of Jesus over every hospital, every person working in the hospital, every patient in every hospital. I plead the blood of Jesus around this globe for every medical professional, whatever their capacity. I plead the blood of Jesus for those in nursing homes and even the staff, even the patients, oh God, even those who are coming in to visit, that you would protect them all from every form of uncleanliness, that they would not be able to continue to carry this virus around. In the name of Jesus, squash it, Holy One, under our feet we pray. In the holy and master's name of Jesus, I cry for our leaders today. Bless Pastor Jenkins and cover him by the precious blood of the Lamb and every other pastor across the globe. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. I pray for the body of Christ to be on one accord, that you would drive out division and uncleanness from amongst us. Forgive us, oh God, when we've allowed our flesh to get in the way of your unity. God, I cry for the leaders, even of our governing our leaders. I cry for Angela Osterbrook. Bless her and cover her. Give her wisdom and guidance. I cry for Larry Hogan. Bless him. Cover him. Guide him according to your righteous right hand. I cry for Ralph Norton and uh, Muriel Bowser and every other mayor across this globe, every other council person, every other uh, CEO or executive, Lord God, in operating in a capacity to influence the lives of others. Give them wisdom, God that we will walk in agreement with your spirit, that king's heart is surely in your hand. Turn it according to your water course. Turn it like a water course according to your will. I plead the blood of Jesus over the White House, every new staff person, over Kamala Harris, over President uh, Biden, Lord God, that you would cover them, protect them, guide them. God, draw them that they would have a walk closer to you than they've ever had in their lives, where there's ungodliness even with them, God. Drive it out by the spirit of the living God, we pray that you, oh God, will get the glory out of them, in spite of them, in the name of Jesus. Let their decisions be in agreement with yours. Lord, we know that it is not your desire that we promote any form of abortion. We ask you to trick their hearts and align them with your design and your will. We know that it is your will, God, that all men will be treated 
created, uh, treated as created equally. So, Lord God, let every policy reflect that in the holy and matchless name of Jesus. And God, we thank you in advance for hearing our cries. We thank you in advance for knowing that you are Savior, you are sovereign, you are God, you are King, oh God. You are never present help in our time of trouble. You never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you for that. This in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, oh King, we pray. And we do give you thanks. Glory, glory, glory to your name, oh God. Bless every person, Holy One, who is crying out to you right now. Bless them, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. I know you're well able, God. I know you can do it. And I count it as the Holy One of Israel. Hear us now. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for hearing our cries. We thank you, God, that even now you have stirred in us a fresh anointing, a fresh yearning for your word, that even now, God, we will go to you, uh, come to you daily and seek your face and meditate on your truth and listen to your word, even as you give us opportunity, that God, the enemy, would not be able to cut in on us, that his schemes will be thwarted, that he would not be victorious because we will stand by faith in your word and in you, almighty King. God, we cry out for every name on that prayer wall, believing by faith that you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask a thing. Surely, God, you're well able. Surely there's nothing too hard for you. And we count it as such in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every voice crying out to you this afternoon, over their families, over everything that concerns them, every prayer request. I plead the blood of Jesus and I come in agreement that your divine will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his great faithfulness. We thank the Lord that his word is true and it's awesome and it will do what it said it will do. So we thank God for each of you. Now we wanna make sure that everybody here, everybody hearing can hear that they need to know Jesus Christ. If you've never come into a relationship with the Lord our God, you've never said yes to the Holy Ghost, now is the time, today is the day of salvation. Don't let this harvest pass you by. What does that mean? Jesus is saying, if you will have me, if you will invite me into your heart, I will come in and consult with you. I will live with you. I will abide with you. And I will deposit my spirit in you to give you the strength and the fortitude you need to make it through this life and to be with me forevermore in the hereafter. It's a great package. All you have to do is say yes. How do you do that? Very simple. You invite him in. You pray a prayer that says, I want you in my life, God. You know, sometimes people say, well, why didn't God do something when this or that happened? And maybe the question is, why didn't we pray and ask God to do something? He said, if you ask, he will provide. He will give. Seek, you will find. If I don't ask, how can I expect to receive? God's given us dominion in the earth. He's given us the right to run the earth. He's given us free will. So he doesn't just force his way upon us, but he makes himself available. So the first ask that every great, every person needs to uh, start with is asking him into their lives. So I want you to do that. How do you do it? Just simply pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life. I repent of my sins and I'm turning to you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. We know that God's word is true. He said, anyone who calls on his name shall be saved. So today, 
If you prayed that prayer, guess what? You are saved. And you ought to rejoice because the angels in heaven are rejoicing on your behalf. And I'm rejoicing right with them. I pray God's blessings over you. I hope you will get rooted and grounded in the word of God and get connected to a good church where you can learn about God. I want you to also email me. Let me know what you've decided today. Let me know what God is doing in your life. If you've got a prayer answer, shoot me an email. R-E-V. L-E-T-T-I-E-C-A-R-R, Rev Letty Carr at whosoeverbelieves.org. That's all one word, whosoeverbelieves.org. And the blessing of God is he will uh, work in your life and I will get that email and I will respond and celebrate what God has done along with you. I am grateful for all of you who join us today. I'm grateful for your faithfulness. I'm grateful for your commitment to pray. And I'm praying indeed that God will bless your life tremendously. Amen. And amen and amen.